different texts from the prophet Isaiah front and back. We have a from the third Isaiah today, Isaiah chapter 60. The, the Hebrew people had been taken into exile many years before that. They kept together as a group. They finally got an opportunity to come home. By the time they came home, it was doubtful if any of the original exiled people were still alive. So those that were returned to the homeland would have had the stories from the past. How wonderful, <coughs> excuse me, how magnificent Jerusalem was. The temple was spectacular. What a great place to worship God. And God had not forgotten them. But now they come home and they find, well, maybe things weren't what they thought they were going to be. The walls of Jerusalem were in shatters and crumbled. The temple was smashed. New other people had moved in and were living there. What are they going to do? What, how is this promise of God going to work? And the promise that Isaiah says is not immediately, but it's going to happen. And I think we can say that it happened at Christmas time. <clears throat> Arise, shine, your light has come. The Lord's glory is shown upon you. Though darkness covers the earth and the gloom of the nations, the Lord will shine upon you. God's glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to your drawing, dawning radiance. Lift up your eyes and look all around. They are all gathered. They have come to you. Your sons and daughters from far away and your daughters on caregiver's hips. Then you will see and be radiant. Your heart will tremble and wide open. Open wide, excuse me. Because the seas of abundance will be turned over to you, the nation's wealth will come to you. Countless camels will cover your land, young camels from Midian and Ephraim. They will all come to she from Sheba, carrying gold and incense, proclaiming the Lord's presence. Sounds like a promise that it does, a prophecy of what we celebrate at Christmas, at Epiphany, and uh, all these times. One of the expressions uh, of Jesus is he is the light of the world. And that he is the light that came, not as expected, but in the most humble beginnings. We heard Luke's story on Christmas Eve of the birth of Bethlehem. Now we hear Matthew's account. And it's somewhat different. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is this newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east, and we have come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said in Bethlehem in Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. <clears throat> you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you have found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went, and looked. The star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in the dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. May God bless our hearing of his holy word. Amen. One of the things that has always puzzled me, if the, these magi saw something in the sky, did anybody else ever think about that?
Now, in those days, they didn't have electricity, so if it gets dark, people go to lock them to, in their house, go to bed. So they weren't out there in the middle of the night looking at the sky. But there were shepherds, there were others that were out. Did anybody else see that, whatever it was in the sky? I've seen more stories over the years of people trying to figure out what that light in the sky must have been, trying to retrace all the astronomy and was it a comet? Was it a lineup of planets? Was it well, whatever? And nobody could come up with a good answer. But this, these men saw something and it got their attention. <clears throat> I don't, I don't normally read commentaries, but I think this one may help us understand a little bit about the, the Magi. And this is by Naveen Saras from Working Preachers, one of the internet websites. We, we see them paying, homage, paying baby Jesus homage and offering him gifts. We see three persons wearing crowns. The evangelist Matthew does not tell us that there were three men or three kings. The term magi is a plural form for magoi in Greek language, which means Zoroastrian priests. They were neither kings nor wise men. Maybe they earned the title of wise men because of their skills in interpreting dreams and understanding astrology. They were well known for telling fortunes and preparing daily horoscopes. Anybody read horoscopes today? They were scholars of their day and enjoyed access to the Persian Emperor. Zoroastrianism is one of the oldest religions in the world, which is still active in Iran today. There's still about 40,000 people that follow Zoroastrianism. And it was the official religion of Persia before Islam. The primary prophet for Zoroastrianism is Zoroaster. Zoroastrians, Zoroastrians believe that he was miraculously conceived in the womb of a 15-year-old Persian virgin. Like Jesus, Zoroaster started his ministry at the age of 30 after he defeated all of Satan's temptations. He predicts that other virgins would conceive additional Primary point of the prophets as history unfolded. Zoroastrian priests believed that they could foretell the, these miraculous births by reading the stars. Like the Jews, Zoroastrian priests were anticipating the birth of the true Savior. The evangelist Matthew tells us that Zoroastrian priests followed the star of Bethlehem to Jesus' birthplace <clears throat> to assure his audience that. Jesus is the fulfillment not only of the Old Testament prophecy of the virgin birth, but also Zoroastrian virgin birth prophecies. The Gentile Magi recognize Jesus' as divinity and kingship. Matthew presents Jesus as an expected king of the Jews and the Gentiles. It was important for Matthew to show that the Magi went, from Beth went to Bethlehem, not to Rome look for the king of the Jews, the Messiah. Matthew's audience understood the Persians to be a long-standing religious and political ally against Rome. So they had that in common. Then he goes on, the Magi gave Jesus three gifts. Gold is a sign of kingship, long associated with the gods, and frankincense represents wisdom, and myrrh is a sign of long life and healing. Frankincense was, and still is, a costly incense, and murder was a prized perfume. These gifts were usually given to a king or a person with high status. So the question is, when you read the text, how many were there? It says there were magi. Plural. Could be two, could be 22, could be, who knows. Uh, the gifts, they could have shared. But it was interesting. Matthew, who was writing to a Jewish audience, emphasized that Gentiles saw who Jesus was. He was the king of the Jews. Now, they were excited about it. And when you look at a map, the 
trip from roughly Baghdad, Iraq, to Jerusalem, and you have to kind of go up over the desert, is a long, treacherous trip. It would have taken many, 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 many days. And who knows how much danger. What was there about the star that attracted them? That they were willing to risk life and limb to go there. Interesting things to think about. But Jesus was for the outsider. He came to the poor shepherds, as we hear in Luke. He came to the Magi. What about the imperial house, Herod, the high priest? He was a problem child. We got to get rid of this problem. Herod was not a nice person, and that's putting it mildly. But he viewed it as a threat. But God took care of Jesus then. God took care of the Magi. God takes care of us. And so when we come to the table, we are celebrating this birth that we as Gentiles can worship the King of the Jews. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who came, who taught, who gave his life for each and every one of us.